Welcome. My name is Terrence Metz. I'm the lead curriculum developer for MG Rush. We focus on structured facilitation, such as decision making, prioritization, and decision quality. This tool called alignment, which involves learning about power balls and the decision matrix, is but one of hundreds of tools that you can experience if you take the public fast professional facilitation class. So how do you facilitate alignment? How do you ensure that what you are doing is the right stuff to reach your objectives? To do that, we're going to build a decision matrix. A good friend, Dr. Tufty from Yale says, make sure you take your grid lines Put them in a secondary color. They should recede in the background. You want your primary information, black, dark blue, to pop out at you. This is our Y coordinate. This is our X coordinate. We're going to put what we have the fewest of across our X coordinate. And typically what we have the fewest of would be objectives. Objectives for many groups would involve things such as revenue. Profit, customer satisfaction, etc. Actions can take different terms depending on what level of the organization you're dealing with. Actions taken by an enterprise or a business unit might be called strategies or initiatives or even programs within a program office. The actions might be called projects within a project team. The actions might be called activities. As facilitators, we don't care, but we need to keep our rhetoric consistent. Let's say at kind of at a strategic level, we've identified some actions to reach these enterprise objectives. Things, things such as a new product launch, a new process for customer relationship management, a new warehouse management system, etc. Having arrayed these as such, most textbooks say, now let's make sure that all of our actions support at least one objective, or maybe we shouldn't do it. Make sure all of your objectives have enough support behind them, or you're putting yourself at risk of failure. Does that logic make sense to you? Made sense to me. So that's exactly what I did. I did that once, and I'll never do it again. I get to the first cell and I go, well, this new product launch will help increase revenue. The answer is yeah. Could it help us increase profit? Somebody made the argument, yeah. Could it increase customer satisfaction? Maybe a bit more obtuse, but somebody made the argument, yeah. How about customer relationship? Could that help increase revenue? Profit, customer sat, warehouse management revenue. Believe it or not, somebody made the argument, yeah. Forty minutes later, we had a page of check marks, not particularly valuable. Most textbooks are not written by people that actually facilitate. The problem with this approach, quite simply, is it relies on what's called a closed-ended question. Closed-ended questions have three possible answers. Yes, no, or maybe. We can make this rather impotent approach highly valuable, highly potent, by changing those close-ended questions into open-ended questions. The proper question to ask at this point in time is not, does it? The better question to ask for each of these cells is, to what extent does it? Therefore, instead of a check mark, we will rely on an iconic symbol we call Powerball. If and when you use a symbol to connote meaning, please provide a legend. You could explain these symbols audibly to people. They will forget. They will refer back to legends. Make sure it's visual somewhere in the pre-read, in the handout, or on the wall. It could be a slide. 
Notice we use a bookend approach. We go from high to low, not high, moderate, low. We explain that in another lesson. But the high symbol full, where more is better, means we've got to have it at any price. It's mandatory. Low means we'd like to have it, but we are not willing to pay any extra for it. And moderate means like to have it, willing to pay a reasonable amount. Now, interestingly enough, group time, meeting time, gets wasted frequently on arguing what is reasonable. When in fact we know and we can prove from a decision quality standpoint, these are the conditions that we need to be most interested in satisfying the extreme conditions. Given these symbols, however, we've now armed ourselves with a potential open-ended question, which isn't, does it? The question is, to what extent will this new product impact revenue? And perhaps since it's new and it's not maybe post-it note itself, eh, a little bit. To what extent might it impact profit? And maybe somebody argues, well, it's really going to help because it's a cannibalizing something else that was not profitable and therefore a profit picture goes up. To what extent might it improve customer satisfaction? And maybe not a lot because it's transparent. To what extent will this customer relationship management impact revenue? And again, we may not see a demonstrable impact there, but somebody goes, oh yeah, by getting rid of our least profitable customers, focusing on our most profitable, we're going to have a terrific impact on our margins. So we've got a high impact on that. And to what extent does that impact customer sat? And again, the answer is big impact, high impact on customer sat. And you get the message, we could go to the warehouse management impact on revenue, could be nominal impact on profit, could be nominal impact on customer sat. Maybe that's moderate because we're no longer screwing up our shipment, so to speak. Well, at the end of the day, you can imagine the paper completed and filled out. We can now stand back and have a rather potent tool suggesting, do we have enough stuff going on to support our revenue goals? And this is the purpose for alignment. Do we have the right stuff? And if they're scared or remain uncertain, that's the purpose for the step itself. Perhaps we need to go back and add number seven. Number eight, in the planning process, we don't plan with the possibility. We plan with the certainty. We will nail this goal if we do these things. We can also look at a horizontal level to what extent these initiatives are important. We can actually convert these back numerically, five, three, one, and add them up across the board. Here you got one, three, one for a total of five. Here you got one, five, five for a total of 11. And here you have one, one, three for a total of five. And from this, we can clearly see the customer relationship management initiative, probably more important to reaching our objectives than either the new product or the warehouse management system. That is the proper way to facilitate consensual understanding around alignment to isolate things we may have forgotten that are critical for us to reach our objectives. Again, this is one tool of hundreds available to you from the uh, FAST facilitation training. We hope to see you there. And until then, remember, knowledge speaks. <laughs>